We are going to show you a little bit on about nail trimming this morning. Just notice when we were getting ready to head outside, I went, huh, looks like Max nails need trimmed. So I thought we would show you guys how we start our little puppies and, and develop them into dogs that are easy to trim their nails for the rest of their life. It's definitely something that you have to keep up on, usually weekly or bi-weekly, um, to try and help keep the nails short. The more you trim them correctly, um, the shorter their quicks will stay and the better overall their nail health will be. So, As well as doing it weekly, even if it's not a lot that you're trimming off, is going to make your puppy more tolerant of this process. Absolutely, absolutely. So to start off with, um, you want to make sure that you have plenty of time to do this. Don't try and do it when you're rushed or, oh, let's trim his nails quick before we get in the car because we've got an appointment in a couple minutes, whatever. Um, Make sure you've got plenty of time so that you can take the time necessary to help develop this behavior properly. What we're going to do to start with is help him to relax here. We've got him laying on his back here in our lap. I can reach all of his paws this way. Um, as he gets bigger, it'll be a little more difficult to do it this way, um, but it's a, it's, a pretty easy, it's a pretty easy way to do it when they're little puppies because you can get a hold of their legs and help them if they're squirming and quit and um, just help him to relax here as well as if you get one that's really feisty you've got like Indian leg hold moves and stuff like that that you can use and we don't need those do we we don't need those all right so when we are looking we've done a video in the past um, showing kind of how to trim the nails because everybody always says oh my dog's nails are black I can't see the quick I don't know where to trim uh, well, you don't need to be able to see through the clear nails. Um, in fact, I often, if I try and gauge off of the clear nails, I'll quick them a lot more often. But there are a couple little things that you can do to make this process pretty easy. Um, if you look at the bottom of his nails here, you can see... I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see the bottom. Um, Sometimes you can peel, it'll roll under just a little bit, and you can scrape this off, or you can use your clippers and take just the side of the sharp edge there and just scrape the underside of their nail. Um, that's going to help to expose the underside of their quick while you're doing this. And then a lot of times when you do this scraping process underneath their nail, it's easier with adult dogs um, and I'm going to stop here for just one second. So he decided that he didn't really like that. He was going to nibble on my hand and squirm. So this is where we just take a second. We're going to reset him up and then help him relax again. Now, there are two things that can happen with this. A, he's going to learn that the more he relaxes, the easier this whole process is. Or B, he will learn that every time he squirms or whines or you know, goes, Meh, when I try and clip his nails, that I will stop for a second and give him a break. So we have to kind of evaluate him. Is he going to try and get out of this more, or is he just going to learn how to relax? And ideally, he would just learn how to relax. The um, one thing that dogs like to do is pull their paw away from you, and the key to helping eliminate that naughty behavior is to just hold on to it. You don't want to pull on it so that it's uncomfortable, but if he wants to pull it away from me, I'm just going to hold on to it until he gives up, gives in, and says, all right, fine, you can hold my paw, and then continue trimming. So as we scrape the underside of his nail here, um, you'll hit a little bit of a catch point. And he doesn't need a lot off of his nails right now, so as I scrape, we hit a little catch point right here. Stop. Stop. Right here. And then that is the point where the end of the quick is, and we will need to start, and we will need to make that trim. You can actually see the little lines there. Can you see that on the screen, hon? trying. Oh, I got too close in it. Stop, Larry. You see the two little lines right there? On either side, that's the catch yep. point. Perfect. So that's what we're going to take off. Oh, quit. Now, part of part of why I wanted to make sure and do a live video with this is 
He's been an overreactor. We've trimmed his nails a couple times before, and he cries every time, whether you quick him or you don't quick him. He does not like his nails trimmed. So this is how we're going to work through this. And this is, I would say, more common than the alternative. I mean, just showing a perfect puppy laying here, getting his nails trimmed like a little angel, right? So he doesn't like his paws messed with as much. So it's something that we need to spend a little more time with, um, as well as he likes to overreact when we trim his nails. So to show you how to work through this, this is what it's going to look like. Um, now, we just trimmed off the same amount I was trying to trim off before, no crying, screaming, or whatever. And that's because he didn't get out of any of it for that little tantrum he, tantrum he tried to throw. I held on to his paw. He said, I don't want you to do that. And I said, get over it. Um, and then trimmed it anyway. So the key to that, though, is if I didn't mess up our video. Is it still going? Uh, I think we're still live. Perfect. So the key to it, though, is to hold on to that paw so that he doesn't get away with it. If he screams, cries, gets away from you, gets away, it's going to make it harder the next time. He's going to fight more because he was successful with his attempt to get out of getting his nails trimmed. So we're going to go through each of these here again. He says, I don't really like this. There's nothing that I'm doing right now that's hurting him. He just doesn't care for it. And like we mentioned, he's an overreactor. So. And some dogs are more vocal about their reactions than others. Right. Um, he's trying to whine about the situation a little bit more, cry about it, thinking that that will make us stop. Some dogs will be a lot more nibbly and bitey at your hands trying to get you to stop. Right. So again, he's pulling his paw away. I'm just going to hold it here closer to his body. He doesn't have the ability to pull anymore. And then as soon as he relaxes, we'll go back to this. Good boy, good boy. And then love on him, tell him he did a good job when he does. Go to the next one. And if you ever quick your little puppy, it's going to happen. It's not the end of the world. Get the bleeding to stop and be more careful next time. Now, that being said, one mistake that we see a lot with nail trimmings is people go, oh, I didn't want to quick them, so I just took the tip off. Well, that's going to actually cause more damage than, not damage, it's going to cause more problems down the road than um, trimming them properly. Good boy, yeah. Because if you don't trim off enough, you're actually allowing the quicks to grow out longer so that you'll be able to take off less and less each time you trim their nails because their quicks have grown out. And then you have a dog with really long nails that you can't end up trimming very much off of without quicking them. Absolutely. Uh, somebody just asked, what do you do to stop the bleeding? Well, it definitely depends on how severe of a quick um, we trimmed. There's... Usually just pressure. Yep. Um, you can push your thumb right in the end of it or get a little piece of paper towel or something. But uh, unless you quick them really bad, just pressure for a few minutes is going to make it go away um, or make the bleeding stop. Um, there are other things. There's styptic powder or... Or gels. Styptic or gels. Gel. Yep. And those would be clotting agents designed for... There's one brand even called Quick Stop. It's specifically designed for nail trimmings if you accidentally quick your dog. And that you would apply some of that. Um, and again, pressure until it stops bleeding. Um, you have to quick the dog really bad for it to bleed for more than a minute or so. So if that were to happen, be a little more careful. Um, but definitely, I, I think you can pick up, either order it on Amazon. We order a lot of stuff on Amazon, but, um, or sometimes Walmart would carry it or, uh, like a pet co or a pet smart probably yeah. would have it as well important um, to trim the edges and kind of shape the nails. You can also use a Dremel. They make Dremel tools for nails um, that at this stage in the game we've kind of done some trim work then we can take and do a little shaping or grinding to get a little bit closer without actually hitting those quicks um, and that's going to help wear them down better too. 
those Dremels, I think, run around 30 bucks. They're battery powered. They're really easy to use. They have a much slower speed than your standard Dremel does, so less likely to, you know, grind, grind off, off their too much or yeah. something. Um, <laughs> but we are finished with this paw, and he's pretty well relaxed at this point. We're going to go to the next one. So we've switched now. Scraping the bottom of his nails here. You can see how he's becoming more tolerant throughout this whole process. Initially, that itself was making him cry. I'm going to try and get a little closer so that we can see exactly how we're doing this. Not only so that you can see how to trim the nail, but also how the puppy's reacting to the nail trimming. Quit. And we're going to take just the top off there as soon as he settles down. I'll quit. And that again is an overreaction. There's no bleeding, there's no quick, there's nothing other than the fact that he doesn't want me to do this. So you need to keep that in mind with your puppy. Sometimes you may have a puppy that doesn't enjoy this process for whatever reason and we need to help. We don't want to make this a, uh, um, I was joking earlier about the, the leg hold moves. The more this is a comfortable situation for the dog, um, the easier the process is going to be throughout their life. So taking the time to settle him down and say, hey, you know, this is a good time to just relax and get some love from mom and dad while we trim your nails because we need to do this. And it's not hurting you and there's no Quit. bad part of this, especially if you just relax. and. So that time, just to explain the little bit of difference, before when he's been overreacting, I stopped, right? I explained there would be two potential options here. He's either going to, um, he's either going to figure out that crying is getting me to stop what he doesn't want, or he's just going to realize that it doesn't hurt and he's going to get over himself. Well, what he's doing right now is basically crying every time. So I'm going to continue to do this until he quits crying. If from now on, if he starts to cry during the process, I know I'm not hurting him. So. I will just continue until he's settled down. I'm not going to try and clip anything when he is squirming because I don't want to clip the wrong thing. But, um, uh, quit. but again, we're just going to help him to work through this. The, the first few times that we do this with him, it's going to take a lot longer than in the future. If we do it right, um, he's going to continue to get more and more comfortable with the whole process. We have some of our adult dogs that will actually fall asleep during this process because they're just relaxed and uh, we joke about getting a Manny and Petty and they're just enjoying themselves during the process. Yes, technically it would be a Petty and Petty. True, they don't have hands. <laughs> but. And there's not, um, you know, not usually a whole lot that needs to be trimmed off of these guys' nails. Uh, yeah, when they're puppies, there's room. not as much to trim off, right. but it still needs to be done. Right. Um, this here, this little tap on his face, just to keep him from nibbling me, because he was doing that a little bit, like nibbling my hand. That's not acceptable. I mean, it's it's uh, him trying to say, no, don't do this to me. And uh, it would be a whole different story if we were hurting him, but we're not. You know, it's we'd never do anything to intentionally hurt our puppies, but... Um, at the same time, it's not not an appropriate response for him. He just needs to relax and realize this is part of life. And the yeah. nibbling also can escalate to more mouthing and then snapping and biting to try and get out of a situation that they don't like or that they're not comfortable with. So if we nip those behaviors in the bud, then we can get a dog that's not going to use mouthing, biting, nipping, growling as a way to communicate with us and a way to try and get out of something that they don't want. Uh, somebody asked, how do you know how far to cut the nails on the black nails? We did go over that in the beginning of the live video, but we can definitely explain it again. We're not using our eyes to visually find the quick in the nail. We're actually using the shape of the nail itself and where it naturally catches at to make make the cut, not where we can see a quick, which I'll do a little zoomed in. 
This one's a clear one, so we'll do one of the, the black one. Well, I don't have any left. Um, and, uh, quit. You are a crybaby. You are a crybaby. I didn't even clip anything. <laughs> like we said, he's a little bit of a vocal overreactor, and him understanding that he's not going to get out of this situation by whining or crying will help him not use those as ways to get out of situations in other training situations. Good. Good boy. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. Much better. So, and he's using, I, I did, uh, as he started to squirm here, I used my legs in vice grip, um, just so that he couldn't get away. We don't want him to figure out that if he squirms enough, he's going to get away. This is kind of why I like to have them between my legs like this. It gives you, quit that, um, a little bit extra support and a little bit extra hold here. A little more control over his body and wiggling. Yeah. Relax. Relax. Now, um, just a little bit of insight into how dogs' brains work, too. A lot of times they can get in a state of... Um, stop. Nibbling on my hand because he doesn't want me to hold on to him anymore. He's really trying to get out of this. Um, so we're just going to not allow him to get out of this. But dogs' brains can get in a state of where they almost get more frantic about something. Whether he needs out of this because he's getting hurt, like if he were to get stuck somewhere or stuck in a trap, or, you know, that's typically, um, they don't understand how, like, logic, they're, they're animals, they're dogs. He gets to the point where he gets more frantic and he's like, I need to get out of this. I don't want my nails trimmed. And continuing to push and push and push and push and push is only going to um, exaggerate that feeling that he has. So sometimes it does. it is important to, we've got both of the front paws done. Um, we'll give him a second to just relax and realize that none of this hurts. None of this is bad. Even playing with the, the clippers around his nails something just to help continue to desensitize himself, desensitize him to this process um, without continuing to push. Um, this is where I'm going back to make sure you've got enough time to do this so that you don't feel rushed and you're like, well, I have to get these done because we need to go. It's um, the more enjoyable that we can make this and the less he gets out of, the easier the process is going to be as he continues to grow up. So. And you can do this on an nightly basis even you're sitting watching tv hop on the floor grab your puppy and just hold on to them and hold each paw for a little bit you're not actually going to be trimming their nails but you can see he's been fighting just having his paw held so do that every night and they're going to become more tolerant to the situation yes it's much this is easier. something we need to work on more isn't it mr Matt? and it's much easier to do this when you've got a little puppy that you can physically control than a 60 pound dog that's struggling fighting biting crying um, and it turns into a wrestling match the back ones typically don't grow at the same rate as the front so don't ever think well i cut x amount off of one nail i need to cut the same amount off of each of them it's not the case um, and the back ones we usually just cut square i don't do as much shaping they grow differently and they wear differently. So a lot of times we'll do the scraping underneath the same, but it's um, rarely do you have to cut as much off the back because they do more of their, their push off and their running. Um, well, their back nails just wear differently uh, for whatever the reason may be. I don't know exactly.
But then you'll have some dogs that dig a lot with their front paws, and their front paws might not need hardly any nails trimming, and then the back ones do. So every dog is a little different. All dogs' feet and nails are shaped differently, so they all will need to be trimmed on an individual basis, shall we say. So when you get a pair of nail clippers, too, a lot of times they have a nail guard, and I have no idea who thinks that that's a good idea to just trim your dog's nail to that point because, um, like we said, every dog's nails grow a little bit differently. Bigger dog's nails are different than little puppy nails. So don't ever use that nail guard as an actual measurement or gauge of where to trim your dog's nail at. All quiet. So resetting him again, more overreacting. We will, um... <laughs> we did get, uh... All four of those nails trimmed before we had a little spell, so we're getting better. Um, it's just a matter of staying consistent, being patient with them, and doing it when they're this size, like Kat mentioned. The, it's much, much easier to handle him now versus when he's 60 pounds going, I don't want my nails trimmed. And just maintain your calm during this process as well. If you get anxious or worked up or, or upset about the process, your puppy and your dog is going to sense that, and then it's just going to make the situation worse, and you're not going to be patient enough to do this process. So we're just messing with him a little bit so that he can <laughs> just realize that there's nothing bad about being in this position. There's no need to fight. Uh, it's a good time to check ears, check teeth that sort of thing as well, which is all things that your dog should be tolerant of, especially for vet appointments and such, so that they can be handled and looked at and have an exam done. They are starting to get... Make, making room for the big teeth to come in. Got a good bite, though. Yeah, pretty teeth. Let's do the last one. I know we had mentioned using a Dremel as well. And another reason that we like using a Dremel on their nails, especially after they've been trimmed, is sometimes even when you shape them with the clippers, they'll have some sharp edges on them right after they've been trimmed. And this is kind of a way to smooth and grind them so that they don't scratch with those nails too. Especially little puppies, you know, they still jump up a little bit, which we try and discourage those behaviors. But if you're in shorts and they jump up on you with, Either they're long nails or freshly trimmed nails. Sometimes it can, be it can be pretty sharp and painful. And so being able to grind and smooth them a little bit more is nice as well. We're done. We've got all the paws trimmed. Now we're going to give him just a couple minutes again to relax. More messing with him. Um, it's, it's important, like Kat was mentioning, to check their ears and mouth and mess with their paws and it's it's uh, very very good for them to be tolerant so um, I am usually pretty good at screwing around with them a little bit and doing goofy things like playing with his mouth and um, all of those are going to be very beneficial down the road especially any of you guys that are testing your puppies in the natural ability test they actually look at their teeth um, as well as at the vet they'll check in their mouth and their teeth and the more tolerant uh, your dog is to this process, the happier everybody that has to do it is going to be. Uh, it's uh, probably one of the least enjoyable parts of the judges to put their hands in a random dog's mouths and try not to get bit. Or <laughs> but um, it's definitely a relief when you come up with somebody and their dog just sits there and allows you to look in their mouth. So. And we want to make sure that you don't finish <laughs> trimming that last nail and then your dog just escapes. So that you create a routine of, if I just sit here long enough, okay, good, I'm gone, and run off. We want them to be relaxed through the whole process, and then when they are done, it's not just an escape. 
it's okay, we'll let you up when we are done messing with you. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, on their back too is a more submissive position and some of your puppies won't like this at all either and it'll take a little while just to get them used to laying on their back and being relaxed here. So these are all good things to work on. Um, just know you're not alone. Not all puppies just love their nails trimmed. It takes time and it takes practice to to help them to feel comfortable with it and for you to feel comfortable with it. But uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know and continue tuning in. We will show you more as we teach Mac more.